What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Israel Adesanya's dream fights in each division. Middleweight champion Israel Adesanya has an absolutely monster matchup set up for UFC 281 at Madison Square Garden in New York City on November 12th when he takes on his ex-kickboxing rival Alex Pereira. It's no doubt a highly anticipated fight, but we're still a few months away from that taking place. In the meantime, Adesanya is training hard and he's doing some videos on his YouTube channel and the recent video that he posted saw him and UFC lightweight Dan Hooker mention their dream matchups and fights they'd like to see from each division in the UFC. Adesanya kicks it off with the women's strawweight division, saying he'd love to see ex-champion Rose Namajunas take on BJJ world champ Mackenzie Dern. Next up, he states that he prefers to see Valentina Shevchenko move up to take on Amanda Nunes for the bantamweight title in a trilogy bout, which he believes Shevchenko can win. At bantamweight, Adesanya mentioned a scrap between Sean O'Malley and Corey Sanhagen, if only because they're both long and tall for their weight class. At featherweight, he wants to see Bryce Mitchell take on Max Holloway, while at lightweight, he's open to a litany of matchups, including Justin Gagey versus Michael Chandler too but he was pretty much open with this one. At welterweight, he stated he 100% wants to see Leon Edwards against Hamza Chimaev. At light heavyweight, he wants to see champion Jiri Prohaska take on Alexander Rakic. And when it came to the big boys, this is what Adesanya stated. A heavyweight, I already know. I want to see Tom Aspinall versus Sarah Gans. That's the heavyweight fight I want to see. Because for me, Cyril Gans was the guy that was like the biggest threat to Francis, and still is to me, the biggest threat to Francis' throne. But then Francis handled him. It was beautiful. And I'm a big fan of both guys, big fan of Cyril. But Tom Aspinall is the guy. I like the style. So him versus Cyril Gans would be a beautiful, athletic, intelligent heavyweight fight. What do you think of Adesanya's list here? And do you agree with this list of fights? If not, tell us who you'd like to see in your dream matchups in the comments section below. Bilal Muhammad says fans don't really know Leon Edwards. Leon Rocky Edwards doesn't have the best luck in the world. He's an incredible welterweight fighter with a 10 fight unbeaten streak, one no contest. That one no contest came in a fight against Bilal Muhammad in March 2021 on account of several eye pokes. Still, Bilal Muhammad seems to respect Edwards for his tenacity and skill level and while he does laud the man for his fighting prowess, Bilal also believes that Edwards doesn't do enough to endear himself to fans. Case in point, this is what Bilal stated to Brendan Schaub in the Food Truck Diaries. That's you know, the hard part because nowadays it's about like what's going to get you the most shine or what's going to get the fans most riled up. You know, Leon obviously is a great fighter and fighters know how good he is. Phenomenal. But like the fans don't really know him because he doesn't post anything, he doesn't, doesn't go on social media crazy, anything like that. Bilal and Shab went on to talk about the Edwards versus Nate Diaz fight, in which Edwards had won every single round pretty convincingly and took away the unanimous decision victory. But he was rocked in the last minute of the fight, which prompted many of Diaz's fans to jump on Edwards through social media. Despite Edwards winning the fight and pretty much dominating Diaz for 97% of it, the narrative coming out of that bout was that Diaz was able to survive. Still, Edwards is a very dangerous welterweight and is no doubt the number one contender for the title. He'll be taking on Kamaru Usman at UFC 278 this upcoming weekend for the welterweight title, a rematch of their fight from way back in 2015, which Usman had won. Do you agree with Bilal here about Edwards? And who are you rooting for in the upcoming welterweight title fight between Kamaru Usman and Leon Edwards? Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the MMA Zone to stay up to date on all of the latest fight news. Chito Vera believes Dominic Cruz's style is not the best for MMA. One thing that Dominic Cruz has been lauded for his entire career was his unique style and approach to cage fighting. His footwork is highly entertaining and for years was something that many pointed to as the main reason for his sustained success. But Marlon Chito Vera believes that the game has evolved and Cruz's style is nowhere near what people make it out to be. Vera knocked out Cruz in the fourth round of their encounter this past weekend in the main event of UFC San Diego. Both Vera and Cruz are in the top 10 of the bantamweight division and while Cruz is a former two-time champion, he's also 37 years old with two damaged knees. Vera, on the other hand, is 29 years old and on a four-fight winning streak, including his knockout win over Cruz. This is what Chito stated to reporters following his big victory over Dominic Cruz about his opponent's style. 
me and my team we really think the way he fights is kind of like very low level like there's no base there's no good stance all that movement side to side like i'm like we we told each other we have to kick this guy's ass but by saying that you have you put a lot of pressure on yourself i just believe that style is not the best style for mma maybe for boxing can works better vera goes on to say that mma has too many weapons and too many things to think about to have success with that style but he did give cruz props for being hard to take down and opening up opportunities to take vera down with chito vera now on a four fight win streak and a top five ranking he's certainly making a case for a potential title shot sooner than later during the in cage post fight interview he didn't make any call outs and stated that he just wants to keep active the 135 pound division is certainly looking interesting at the moment with sterling as champion dillashaw the number one contender former champion peter yan taking on fan favorite sean o'malley at ufc 280 and don't forget about corey sanhagen and jose aldo also gracing the top five right now what do you make of vera's comments here concerning cruz's style patty pimblett reacts to call out from terence mckinney UFC lightweight Terence McKinney recently called out Paddy Pimblett following his big victory over Eric Gonzalez at UFC Vegas 59 last weekend. It was McKinney's third first round finish in the UFC and he's 3-1 so far in the octagon since making his debut just last year. With Paddy seeing so much success as well, McKinney wants to try to end that hype by calling the Liverpoolian out. This is how Patty the Batty responded to that call out while speaking with reporters at UFC San Diego this weekend. Right now. Yeah, we've I've actually, me and Terence have actually spoke in the past. We've spoke on Twitter, you know what I mean? And we actually said that we we'll probably will fight in a few years down the line when it's a main event on a on a proper big card. But he's obviously seen how it blew up and he wants to jump the queue and jump the bandwagon now. But as I said, I don't mind. I'll fight anyone. And, Patty goes on to say that he's simply taking any fight as it comes and feels as though he's ready to fight in cards in Las Vegas. Patty had won his first three fights in the octagon and is currently on a five fight win streak dating back to his cage warriors days. He's got three straight finishes in the UFC, two of them submissions, and he has yet to see the third round in the octagon. It's safe to say that Patty's star is only continuing to climb, especially with each fight that he has. The interest and excitement he generates hasn't really been seen for quite a few years, save for Hamsat Chimaev. At the same time, Paddy understands that he's fighting in perhaps the toughest division in the UFC at 155 pounds, and the caliber of fighters in the division is simply staggering, so he's keen to take things one step at a time. What do you think of Paddy's comments concerning Terence McKinney? BJ Penn loses bid for the Republican nomination for Governor of Hawaii. Former lightweight and welterweight champion, UFC Hall of Famer BJ Penn was running to become the Republican nominee for the governor of Hawaii. He announced his candidacy earlier this year with a platform that included improving the economy. However, he lost by a wide margin to Duke Iona. Iona won with nearly 52% of the vote, with more than 90% of precincts reporting, with Penn receiving just over 24% of the ballots counted. Penn ended up with runner-up status here, though for a primary, Iona won by a wide margin. Iona will run for governor of Hawaii in November against the Democratic nominee, Josh Green. What do you think of BJ Penn losing his bid to become the Republican nominee for governor of Hawaii? And do you think we'll ever see an ex-MMA fighter elected to office? If so, who do you think it would be? Today's video was packed with some juicy stories from the fight world. What are your thoughts about what's going on in MMA? Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the MMA Zone to see more videos just like this. See you next time.